South Carolina is going to their fourth straight Final Four. Make no mistake, the media may have switched up now, but they did not take South Carolina seriously in the preseason. Part of me wonders if this was wishful thinking. No one outside of die-hard South Carolina fans would have predicted another undefeated Final Four run. But there's no reason to think this team would be anywhere outside the top five. I was not surprised that South Carolina ended up being this good. But what surprised me is how quickly they got to that point. I thought they wouldn't look like this until the later half of the season, but they were dominant starting from opening day. Today I'll do a follow-up on the preseason video I did on South Carolina and go over what I got right and what I got wrong. If people like this style of video, I'll consider doing this with other preseason videos I made. Now that's out the way, let's get into it. South Carolina lost a lot of players during the offseason. They practically lost their whole starting five to the draft. They lost some bench players as well. This has caused many people to write South Carolina off. The consensus is that they will be decent but not good enough to compete for a national championship. Make no mistake, they are still good enough to win a national championship. Bare minimum, they will make a deep playoff run. It didn't take more than one game to show what South Carolina was capable of. They made it known very fast what type of season it would be. They beat Notre Dame so hard even Don Staley was surprised how badly they cooked them. She said they had some bad practices, but obviously it didn't matter. From opening day, it was clear that if South Carolina plays like that, not a single team can compete. This is what I believe South Carolina's starting five will be. We will get more into the point guard situation later. I think it will rotate between many players. When I suggested Chloe Kitts was going to start, I got absolutely dogpiled in the comments. You couldn't find a single person seven months ago that thought she would start. So I'm definitely going to brag about that. I correctly guessed four out of the five starters. I was completely off on Raven Johnson, which I'll get into later. I think everyone will play a key role for South Carolina, but I think these three players will be the most valuable. Camila Cardoso, Tahina Pau Pau, and Chloe Kitts. Camila Cardoso and Tahina Pau Pau are the most important pieces, but instead of Chloe being the third person, I would give that honor to Full Wiley. She completely changes the pace of the game. Defensively, she always puts in an amazing effort. But when she gets going offensively, that's when South Carolina looks completely unstoppable. She's one of those rare players where there's nothing the defense can really do. They just have to hope she isn't making her shots that day. Since we're on the subject of Chloe Kitts and Full Wiley, I'll briefly talk about the breakdown videos I did on them at the beginning of the season. The stat lines I projected for them were very similar to what their actual performance was. It was a little bit easier to try to figure what kind of production they would bring, because Dawn has a streamlined development process. I'll do a video further breaking down the class of 2023 players for South Carolina. I think they are exactly where they need to be. They had some frustrating moments at times, but that's normal for a freshman. But they also had moments this season where they were a big part of the team winning. One thing I find particularly interesting is that Tessa Johnson is getting the most minutes between the three in the tournament. During the regular season, it was the opposite. She has gotten a lot better, so it makes sense, but... I'm curious to see if this continues for the rest of the tournament. But I'm not very high on Raven Johnson. Her tournament run was just straight up awful. They could run Tahina at the one, but I think an off-ball shooter is a better use for her game. Tessa Johnson and Malaysia have high ceilings, but they are inexperienced. I think the best bet is to hope Tessa and Malaysia are good enough their rookie season to be facilitators. It's a huge thing to ask out of them, but it's been done before. I questioned if Raven Johnson would be good enough to be a starter next season, and she proved me wrong. I will hold the L on that. If they didn't have Raven, they would not be undefeated right now. Her floor general abilities are very important to South Carolina. She always seems to make the right play when they need it most. Her three-point shooting has been up and down this season, but the most important thing is that the defense can't leave her open. The fact the defense has to respect the shot makes it easier for the rest of the teammates to get better looks. I got clowned for my Raven Johnson take, and it was well-deserved. But some South Carolina fans aren't innocent either. Some of y'all were dunking on Chloe Kitts. Oh, she's too skinny. She's uncoordinated. She's too soft. Then as soon as she plays a few good games, y'all switched up real fast. Don't get me wrong, she definitely has some things she needs to work on and doesn't always play well. But she was instrumental in their win against Utah, Duke, UConn, and their first LSU matchup. She shot an amazing 42% from three last season. This was on over 370 attempts. Cardoso will draw many double and triple teams, which means she will be wide open. 
For South Carolina to win the championship, she will need to hit these shots. And I believe she will. She will have so many easy looks, I wouldn't be surprised if she shoots 50% from three. She is also a good facilitator. Ideally, someone else will run point, but I can see Dawn having her run point guard if none of the younger players are cutting it. Tahina ended up shooting 48% from three instead of 50%. She's also proven to be a good point guard option, especially when Raven is taking a break. I think what I like most about this team is that it forces Dawn to get more creative. I think she over-relied on the greatness of Cook and Aaliyah Boston last year, which ultimately led to their downfall. The other players weren't ready to step up besides Cardoso, but now she will be developing several players at the same time. This will not only make them less predictable on offense, it will make them a force for years to come. This is exactly why I think South Carolina will do a much better job against Iowa this go-around. Secretly, I think Dawn prepared for this exact moment. She made sure the way Iowa beat them will never happen again. A team can't stack the paint to limit the post players because there's multiple shooters. If their best player gets in early foul trouble, it won't completely throw off the rhythm of the game because they are used to playing without Cardoso. There isn't any one-way players on South Carolina. The best defenders on the team can easily score 15 to 20 points if they need it. I think they finish second in the SEC, but win the SEC championship. This is because I expect them to struggle towards the beginning of the season, while LSU will be ready to go right away. I was half right. They won the SEC tournament championship, but they won the SEC regular season title too. I thought South Carolina experimenting with rotations would cause them to lose a couple of SEC games, but clearly that wasn't the case. They had zero signs of chemistry issues, even from day one. I think that's the part Don Staley doesn't get enough credit for. Perhaps it's not about how long players have played together, but the type of culture the coaches put in place. I expected South Carolina to dominate and be a Final Four level team, even with all the players they lost in the offseason. What I did not expect was for them to go undefeated and be the heavy favorite to win. If they don't win, they did not underachieve. It wasn't a choke or them underperforming, because that's not the energy the media or most people had before the season. The same people that counted South Carolina out are trying to put more pressure on them than any other team, including the ones that were supposedly supposed to be better than South Carolina. This is not a championship or bust team. Regardless if they win or not, South Carolina will be the best team next season. They are losing Cardoso, but everyone else will return with more experience, and they are getting yet another talented recruiting class. That being said, if they do pull this off, it will be one of the greatest feats in women's basketball history. They will have gone undefeated with only one All-American on their team, and a team made of mostly underclassmen. That's it for this video. If people like this, I'll do more videos in this format. It's my first time doing it, so I'm open to feedback. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.